Hey everybody, today I want us to talk a little bit about Curl. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Curl, here's a little bit about it. It is a command line tool and library for transferring data with URLs since 1998. That's, wow, that's a long time. Uh, a little bit more. Oh, wow. Um, just started to read a little bit more here. What is curl used for? Curl is used in command lines or scripts to transfer data. Curl is also libcurl used in cars, television sets, routers, printers, audio equipment, mobile phones, tablets, medical devices, set-top boxes, computer games, media players, and is the internet transfer engine for countless software applications in over 20 billion installations. Wow. Uh, curl is used daily by virtually every internet using human on the globe. Okay, so now we know a little bit about Curl. Before I start, I want to say thank you, Curl. We love you, Curl. Curl's amazing. And as I've mentioned many, many times, it is extremely hard to build something that has value for other people much less build something like curl which is potentially the the backbone of the internet along with things like open ssl and ssh and telnet and ftp so major thanks kudos love all of that stuff to curl i can't emphasize this enough this is super important because I'm about ready to pick on curl a little bit. But before I do that, I just really want to make sure that we understand that this is building something like this is supremely hard. And I was doing a little bit of this uh, AI explanation of curl before we started asking how many times is it used per day. And the AI is basically saying, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, it, it's a lot. It's it's in the the billions um, per per day. So this is really incredible what they've built. That being said, writing perfect software is very hard. And in one of our recent customer discussions, demoing Mentor, uh, I added Curl just because I hadn't looked at Curl in a while, and we came across. Uh, this gem. So before I talk about this and give you kind of my take on this, I want to just give everybody a moment to take a look and see what we have. Here's the beginning of this function. Uh, Alt S V C add. And you can see that mentor is flagging this thing here. Uh, I, th I believe that if we scroll down just a little bit, we will see, oh, maybe it was somewhere else. Uh, yeah, that might have been a different one. Sorry, I thought there were like two instances of this. But so here we have this, this pretty massive if expression. And uh, we can see too that once the if expression completes, there's a semicolon here, which is sort of like a no-op. Now, if you need more time to look at this uh, before I sort of explain, I think, what's going on here and why I have serious issues with this code, please pause the video and you can look at it more because I'm about ready to spoil this for you if you haven't already figured out what this code is doing. All right, so this code is really not super great code. And it's not just 
the fact that this if expression spans uh, almost 20 lines. It's not that there's, it's not just that there's no comment. It's not just that there's no body when this is true. Uh, like all these things, right? There is a, a more serious underlying issue with this code that in my mind makes this, I'm not sure how else to say this, but completely unacceptable. It's just completely unacceptable code. This never should have, I think, been committed into curl's mainline. And this is, this is curl mainline. This is not, uh, this is not pretend, right? We're looking at, um, from just a couple days ago, as I was mentioning, we just added it and curl's fantastic, right? Look at this. I mean, this is a really good score and, um, you know, things are kind of dipping with the score lately. And, you know, again, no surprise. We're, we're seeing a lot of these trends where the fidelity of code is degrading, I think largely because of, um, the AI code generators, but that's okay. You know, we're, we're here to fix these things. But, uh, as you can see that these are, this is sort of curl live. And I think this is the one we were looking at. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. So what this code is doing, I believe I haven't actually run this code, but just processing this and making sense of this function. What it seems this code is doing is essentially taking an input line that looks like this and then uh, parsing it through this, this line, this line input, right? This is their line input right here. And then you can see line is passed to all these guys and they're passing the address of this more likely than not so they can move the the current like head location for the line forward so then every time they're looking for like the next word uh they are moving sort of like the starting point something to to this effect and then they're also storing these various uh datas um in uh these variables as they're moving forward now here's, here's the real kicker. This is meant to be executed consecutively. That's actually what's happening is they're making these function calls and they are reading these things out one after another in a consecutive order. So this, this first uh, source ALPN uh, is is right here. The source host is right here. The source port is right here. Um, now we have the uh, destination ALPN. That's this H3 destination host. That's this uh, URL destination port. That's the port. Then we have this date. Uh, I, I I think the date is. I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe the date is this whole thing because this is like uh, a year, a, a month, a day, and a time. And then maybe this persists as this one. Uh, the priority, uh, maybe the priority is not here. I'm, maybe there's a missing parameter. It's not entirely clear. But the important thing to take away is that what's happening here in this if expression is they are using the side effect that these are all ORed together and the return value of it being zero for all the cases where it's succeeding to then force the next function to be invoked after this returns false, knowing that this is the whole principle of like, when things succeed, it gives you a zero. And if it's a non-zero value, that's some kind of error right? Like a negative one or five or something. And that by itself is just a, an idiom that people use in C. I'm not saying good things or bad things about that, 
But what I really have issues with, which I, I would never allow code like this accepted in any project that I was working on and overseeing, because this is super, super brittle code. All it takes is a single junior engineer to not understand that these are principally being ordered. And again, there's no actual enforced ordering in this if expression, which is why this is so fundamentally wrong, is anyone can just drop a curl x stir uh, number or whatever uh, in the middle of outer space right here and then just add it to the end of the line thinking, yeah, I don't know, all right, just it'll figure it out. And now you've sort of broken everything. What I think makes this even more interesting is as I was looking at this before getting ready to record this, I was thinking to myself, how will I explain to the cheaters how they might go about fixing this? And you know, there's, there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but ultimately what kind of really dawned on me is it's not even so much the code that is, I mean, the code is actually a, a major part of this, but the, the origin of the problem is actually the way that they're structuring this uh, line of input, that this line of input without having tags or essentially keys for this key value pair, right? This is, this is a key value pair. The key is saying that the second thing here is uh, a host and the value is example.com. So what you really want as a solution is either something that is passing a uh, command line parameter that's giving you like sort of the dash uh, source host and then the next thing that you read is this or you want it to be in something perhaps like uh, JSON a JSON file where it's a key and value and so different than in many of the other cases that we've looked at rather than me trying to rewrite this because uh, we could rewrite this a bunch of different ways to make it better, it's still fundamentally flawed because of the design of this feature. Uh, this is super brittle, uh, and you really don't want to do this for a variety of reasons. Uh, even if this is just test code, I think that this is still really not good because it's too easy to create an error in accidentally dropping one of these or adding uh, something else. You can just fat finger this way too easy. These really should have labels. Uh, and that's why we have things like XML and JSON and uh, command line parameters that uh, take a flag that let you know that, hey, this is about ready to what you're gonna read next is gonna be this thing. So then you can do this lookup association between the key and the value. On top of that, uh, when I was looking through the results with Mentor, I realized that Mentor was actually also really struggling with this. And so we'll just quickly look at the four solutions that Mentor provided. Uh, each one of these is maybe slightly better. Uh, this one basically just makes this its own function and then uh, checks to make sure that it, it's not like a null string and then does a bunch of stuff. Basically the same thing that you saw over here. Uh, this one uh, sort of tries to do a very similar thing and so on and so forth until you get to this last one. And this last one, I think, is arguably the best of what Mentor's providing in that it's got this parse line function. And then in that, it's breaking it down into these three different uh, pieces. Uh, the source piece, the destination piece, and then the date persist priority piece, which makes logical sense in my mind, because as you probably saw from over here, the first, what is it, uh, three of these are all related to the source, uh, the next three are all related to the destination, and the last of this 
are this date persistent priority, which is basically what it has here: source, destination, date, persistent priority. And also, what what's good and again bad is Mentor was smart enough to preserve the ordering so that source comes first, then destination, then this piece. Uh, so they're called in that order. And then I haven't looked deeply at this uh, code, but my speculation is let's just assume that Mentor's doing kind of like all the right stuff. Uh, even this, which is modularizing the code and making it easier to reason about, at least now you know, well, there's like three sections and it's going to walk through this. And I, I think that it's still keeping the logic mostly correct, uh, even though it's changed these to ands. Uh, it's now returning these booleans and it's nodding this. So uh, again, let's just assume that this is all correct. This still is in my mind, not super great. And again, the reason why this is not super great is that there's this implicit ordering that's happening where if you simply just invert destination uh, with source, this whole thing will break. And that is not a very good design. So even though Mentor is failing, uh, I think Mentor's giving sort of this heroic effort on trying to fix something that is in some ways, I think, out of its hands. I think the actual proper fix to this has nothing to do with uh, rewriting this code. This this code needs to go away and uh, to dev null. This, this just needs to vanish from the planet. But then what we need to do is we need to essentially change this. This structure, I think, needs to be changed so it's more robust. And I want to say, in, you know, my take on this is, again, even if this is test code, I, I still don't think that this warrants its existence because testers can still fat finger this or engineers that are, you know, like QA engineers that are trying to replicate this, they can accidentally leave something off. Uh, more likely than not, this is going to evolve and then it's gonna look like what we saw in ClickHouse where you've got like a hundred different parameters on this if and really all you want is basically just a map you want a map that's doing a key and value lookup, and then all of the keys are stored in the map for the things that you have in this. It reads it in through the input, and then when you want to get the values for that particular key, you just look it up in the map, right? Uh, so this is, I think, kind of a unusual example in that most of the time I would hack on the code, and in this case, I would actually wipe out the code entirely and I would change the original uh, structure of how this is being presented. So minimally, it's having um, command line parameters that are named. So you have an association or you're reading this in from something like XML or JSON. JSON would be my preference. And then it's just doing it for you. So. That's basically all I wanted to share. I just wanted to do a quick little uh, video on curl and uh, again, much love for curl. Uh, very seriously, thank you. If you work on curl, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. We love curl. It's the backbone of the internet. It's, it's as we just saw, it's being used by billions of people a day. But even in cases like curl, which is one of the most hardened pieces of software in the world, you can still have stuff like this. And my hope is that as we all uh, grow from learning more and cool things, staring at open source and using tools like Mentor to explore the dark spaces, we can identify these things, uh, which may have just slipped under the radar. And then now that we have awareness, we have visibility into it, we can refactor this uh, minimally into something perhaps that looks like this, but probably just re-architecting this uh, initial design so that something like this uh, kind of never really rears its, um, its head in the future. Okay, that's all I got today. Thanks, guys.